What's up, guys? Welcome to What's Barking Local. My name is Jerry Miller. Super stoked for today's show. Of course, What's Barking <laughs> Local is your epicenter for everything positive in our animal community in Charlottesville, Albemarle County, and Central Virginia. Today's show and the star of today's program, Patty Bowden, is Patty Bowden no more. She is now Patty Zeller, <laughs> recently <laughs> married. In fact, Judah Wickhauer, our director, let's go to the two shot do, and do let's you want a welcome Patty. This? I love it. I saw it on up? Facebook. No, Woo! Yeah. <laughs> High five, lady. Congratulations. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> how, would, how do you feel? Yeah, wedded. <laughs> <laughs> it's Patty, great. Patricia Zeller. That's right. It's got a good ring to it. It does. It does. Talk Pretty to nice. us about uh, what's going on here. What? what do you what's, mean, what's going, going on? on? How are you feeling about it? Oh, man. Well, well we just kind of didn't waste any time. We got engaged a couple of weeks ago, and we had some. We had free time yesterday and said, well, I don't want Let's just go get married. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, You've yeah. been together for a while. We have. Over, yeah. Yeah, over two years. Yeah. So, I mean, so, you guys know each other inside and out. I think so. Yeah. He's a tremendous supporter of Animal Connection he and all your endeavors. Superb. Yep. I couldn't ask her better. I yep. love it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so what does uh, Mrs. Zeller, the newly married woman, have in oh store my for us today? goodness. Well, we're just going to talk a little bit about the week that was. And gosh, if anybody didn't go to the Santa Paws event on Saturday, you missed it. I mean, there were tons of vendors. As this was for Green Dogs Unleashed. Um, just a great time. You guys were there. there. You and Trey and Lauren were there. Yeah. Did some shopping. It was great. Had your picture taken with the big elf and maybe the Grinch. With and, Santa. Yep. That's yeah. right. So and I do have to show off the shirts again because I believe Erica is going to be selling them. Yeah, you know, oh. to make this is the cutest Christmas shirt Adorable. I have ever seen. I'll hold it, up. it really is. I mean, it's got you know the her dog from the the famous twelve pack of the Great Danes. That's right. So and it's got sponsors, sponsors on the back, on the back. Of, course, of which of which we are. So uh, you can get on Green Dogs and find out about that. And um, also at Animal Connection, we have the Green Dogs calendar, and this has got. All of the Great Danes in the calendar and various dogs that have been rescued throughout the year. And it's just a superb little calendar. This is Colleen Owens' dog, you know, uh, that she got. And he's blind and she, you know, he's found a really great home with her. So, you know, lots of fun dogs on this. Um, also at Animal Connection, we have from Jacqueline Myers, um, Loving an Older Dog. This is a book she wrote about her experiences with Peaceful Passings, Senior Pet Rescue. So we have some really... Uh, good things at Animal Connection you can give back to the community. We're also doing uh, accepting food donations for the house project. You know, they really need to feed some of these dogs in need uh, during the winter, and we've got some good deals on some of our premium bags of dog food that, that are a great value for them and something that they want. You also so, had fun Sunday. We did. At the Santa Fun Run. Oh my gosh, over 600 Santas at the Fun Run. I don't have a number yet from. Uh, Brian Harris uh, with the Ark of the Piedmont, but man, it was a great turnout, beautiful weather, uh, lots of fun going down the downtown mall in a Santa suit, and the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile Wiener was there, so we were excited about getting a free whistle. <laughs> and you also got a fabulous yep. photo next to a musician poster. <clears throat> oh, that's right. That's I saw it right. on your social. Robert Earl Keen. That's right. Was that your first date? That was our first date. That was a tester date oh, to see if we date. should date. So uh, we kind of consider Robert Earl Keen as our anniversary well, guy. Well, oh, another reason I like Conrad, <clears throat> the tester date, was at a beautiful live show. Well, that was... That was kind of my idea. Oh, come on, no, your that, idea. No, well, uh, I mean, what the way it happened was, I mean, I was on Facebook wanting to know, hey, who's going to go to Robert Earl King? Because I was going to go. And then he called up and said, hey, you want to go and have a drink before dinner and go to the show? So that's how it all started. The way to Patty yes. Zeller's heart. Yep. Live music and a couple cocktails. Hmm, possibly. <laughs> possibly. So you've had a busy week. Yeah. Busy, busy week. And it's just going to get even busier. Because we've got things happening this weekend. So um, one of our guests today, Amy Wickshorn, is going to be in our store on Saturday. And this is something you're really not going to want to miss at all. Uh, she does amazing things with essential oils for people and specifically for dogs. Uh, so if you want to know about things you can use for calming, uh, excitable pets during the holidays, you're going to want to come and see what Amy has to offer. She's got some great ideas for people and for pets, and you can test these things and see how they are. And, and then we're having a Stuff Your Stocking Saturday, so we have big stockings, and uh, whatever you can fit in these stockings is going to be greatly discounted. 
So that's kind of fun, you know, come get a stocking from us and stuff it with all your dog's favorites or your friend's favorites, but just stuff those stockings and have some fun. Nancy Gwynn says, I am so hmm. mad I wasn't the flower girl. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I think she would, and she and C Note were going to be the ring bearer. <laughs> I was so mad I wasn't the lead usher. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we're going to have a party in January, so maybe we'll recreate that for Nancy. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Studio Cam, Judah Wickhauer, introduce our guest, Patty Zeller. Right. Well, we have today Amy Wickshorn who, with Young Living Essential Oils in your oily house. Uh, she's a Charlottesville doyen and it knows a lot of things that's oh, going like on that and then word. we also ha i know it's a good one isn't it yes. and then we have heather travis who's a really great friend of the store lead the way canine training so uh and what we're going to talk about is how in the world do your dogs deal with all these relatives and family and things going on during the holidays and these two young ladies have really got some good ideas so let's let's get the ideas rolling how about that? How about we start with you, Amy? Yeah. Hi, Jerry. Good Hi, to see Patty. You. Yeah. Hi, Hello. Patty. What's up, Heather? So good yeah. to see you all today. <coughs> well, Patty hit the nail on the head, right? This time of year yep. can be really overwhelming. And you already have animals that have an underlying anxiety issue, potentially, separation issues, potentially. Mm -hmm. And you'll see these sometimes manifest even physically with hot spots that they tend to keep mm -hmm. going back to. And the other thing that I always talk about are the way that we can leverage oils not only to address the anxiety and the hot spots because there's great stuff for both of those but tummy issues some of these relatives i've heard oh boy. sometimes <laughs> think it's a super cute idea to slip a little turkey to your five pound yorkie <laughs> we all know the consequences of that can be damn dire. it cousin john <laughs> That's right. it's always the uncle it's the drunk uncle but we even have items for tummy troubles for right. pets so Whatever you're looking to do to alleviate your pet's suffering, to give them comfort, there's or an travel. oil for that. Oh, right. gosh, mm -hmm. yes. Or travel. If yes. For people, too. That's right. Yeah. Well, and hand-in-hand hand with oils goes training, that's right? That's exactly yeah. right. And mm -hmm. that's where for you sure. come in. You can really help give yeah. your pets more comfort when they know what to expect. Give so, us some perspective. Right. One thing I wanted Heather to talk about specifically is what can you do in advance to make sure that your dog has got... So that's the key. So, is, right. You know... We know the holidays are coming every year, uh, generally, you know, about the same time every year. Um, so the best thing you can do is plan ahead and, and start planning for these kind of chaotic, stressful, um, and unpredictable times. That's the biggest thing for dogs is it's an upset th to their routine usually. You know, there's people visiting that they don't see on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. There's weird, you know, changes in the household, decorations, smells, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, do dogs are not generally huge fans of, you know, big disruption to their schedule. It's so just the energy involved with that. They pick up on yeah. that. When you're, it, you're starting I mean, to get ready for it. It's stressful for the humans. I mean, I know yeah. it's it's a busy time of year, and so we feel stressed, and the dogs are going to feel it as well. They're going to feed off of that. So, you know, planning in advance, training your dog for these types of things, doing kind of practice runs, and, mm -hmm. and thinking about what are the skills I'm going to need my dog to be able to do um, during the holidays, and then starting them early, you know? Well, what are the three or four most important commands that you can think of right away uh, that they should know? Probably the... Question. Yeah. Probably the number one would be like a good place command. So place. that's sending the dog to their dog bed and asking them to just hang out there and kind of chill and knock it off their bed until you tell them they're done. And that's great for, you know, when you have guests over and you have food out or, you know, maybe you have little ones uh, roaming around and you don't want a big dog knocking them over or, or maybe the little ones like to share with the dogs what they're eating and it's not something appropriate for them. So oh boy, giving kids. them, basically <laughs> giving the dog a safe place that they can go to and still be included in the activity we don't have to lock them away in a bedroom you know which right. is kind of the other option that tends to happen a lot at these times of, of year oh you know? look at his face um but <laughs> don't teaching, do it ladies teaching them gentlemen. to just be calm and hang out on their bed allows them to be part of the activity without being in the way underfoot and it and it, and it keeps them a lot you know the stress level is a lot lower so that's a big one the place command is one of my favorite mm -hmm. um skills for a dog and the dogs generally really like it we teach it with a lot of food and so they're like oh it's the magic carpet of treats why wouldn't i go hang out there <laughs> I was like, one. did you say food? I'm yeah, in. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if I sat, every go. time I sat on I'll the couch, somebody place. brought me Let's chocolate, I would never leave that couch. <laughs> chocolate or cold beer for I'll me. I'll go now. <laughs> so, place command, what mm -hmm. other commands do you What um, other strategies? Uh, I mean, it's a lot of, uh, for, for the first thing I think of with Christmas is the Christmas trees, right? And especially with the younger mm -hmm. dogs, they tend to want to investigate and maybe help with the decorations or undecorations, sometimes <laughs> as 
You know, I have clients that go, I go home and I, it's, it's the game of how many decorations can I find loose around the house from the tree. Um, so things like teaching the dog to respect the boundary around the tree, they make products, you know, like uh, boundary products and stuff like that. But um, th that's, that's another big one is like, how do you protect your, your fragile tree and ornaments and then the gifts under the tree? Um, so that's something else to be mindful of. Um, that, that's a big one. Yeah. I mean, that's a good place for the oils too, because mm -hmm. if they're exactly. in place... You can apply something to their place. Well, and what maybe? you said was so powerful. Animals pick up on our energy, right? Just mm -hmm. like small children do. Mm -hmm. And one of the most powerful things you can do is treat yourself first, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. A little valor or peace and calming on your wrists and just taking a moment to let your shoulders fall away from your ears and take a deep breath. Center yourself before you think you're going to center your animal. What does valor do for people that don't know? Valor is incredible for bravery, for courage, for collection. I always say there are 22 Amy's in any given day. An Amy that's Whoa. thinking about the groceries, an Amy that's thinking about the kids, an Amy that's thinking about the laundry. That's a well, lot of Amy's. Of, Holy well, smokes. ask my husband. <laughs> we love Sean on this Poor show. guy. Poor guy. But when you have valor it lets you really simmer down and focus on what you're doing and it doesn't mean you forget about all those other mm -hmm. tasks but it can really help you with your animals know they can sense that you're now focused and the second thing is we don't know how toxic all the stuff we have around us is all the time candles spray mm -hmm. you know oh this year we have a fake tree so we bought a can of pine mm -hmm. Shh, oh my gosh that gets to our animals as much as it gets to us and it's plain poison we're spraying the the fake snow on the windows yeah right know what I'm talking about? don't let right? them lick it i know right it's so don't bad let them that's dogs. right yeah. or we you know have a scented pine cone and to them they think that's just a snack or potpourri exactly mm -hmm. so a lot of opportunities for having both humans and animals feel much better and able to focus on the commands that they've learned in the past. Nicely done. Yeah. Amy. I, ha I have used that. So there's like the uh, Idaho balsam fir. Oh, it's I have so used good. that. You put it on the, on the light bulbs around your house, and everybody thinks you have a live Christmas tree. Yeah. Even if it's tinsel, it's a live Christmas tree, you know? We <laughs> it have, smells really nice. We have yeah. so many <laughs> nut uh, or tree, fir yeah. tree options. We have pine. We have yeah. northern, black, northern black light spruce. Right. And they all, exactly like you said, because I thought yeah. for sure I'd miss that smell. But we also have one that anybody who signs up this month gets for free, and it's called Christmas spirit cool it's yeah. like orange and fur and awesome and the animals love it too my dog when i put it anywhere near mm -hmm. me will like come and start rub loving on me the other yeah. night i used peace and calming on my wrists at a friend's house uh -huh. we were having a great visit we were having a great time but i was just needing a little chill and their dog came over and like loved on me for 10 minutes and passed out. Oh, it's amazing. Right on wow. top of me. That might have just uh, answered our guest question or our viewer's question. This is from, how do you say Mark's last name? Malin. Mark Malin has a great question for us. Mark, no. love you, man. Mark says, what's an oil to use when traveling a long distance with a dog? That's a good question. Yeah. Peace is that and, the one? I love peace yeah. and calming, but yeah. we actually have a specific line just for dogs, okay. just for animals. And one that I love is called Tea Away. There's also one called mm -hmm. Stress Away. And so what I'd have you consider, and I'd always help you try these before you bought something, is animals are just like us. And so what wine do you like? What perfume do you <coughs> like? What you know, television do you like? It varies. Mm -hmm. So we have several options. And let me tell you something. A dog will tell you straight out which one they like. Yep. I like peace and calming myself. And I can tell you my friend Leo loved it. His little tongue was hanging out, falling asleep on my nice. lap. <laughs> his parents are traveling in India. And his mom legit took a picture and texted it. That's uh, my dog. What other things? I mean, you know, sit, stay, come. What, did, what do you I mean, want all, people to do when relatives show up? It. All those things. Yeah, that's another good one. There's going to be a lot of cookies and, and treats. And, you know, I Can know. Can you tell me to leave it? That might help. Yeah, <laughs> I, could, I could use some reinforcement of the leave it command around this time of year myself. Especially but yeah, the leave it. With the bourbon. Yeah, <laughs> leave, leave it alone. Um, that's a good one. You know, again, with the vi visiting family, you know. Um, teaching them that just because it fell on the ground doesn't mean it's up for grabs for the if, pets. If you have a young dog that hasn't met all these relatives before, how do you recommend that yeah. people so uh, it depends if introduce? It's, so I, I, I have a client that they, uh, this is a question I literally just had a couple weeks ago. They had adopted a dog like 
four days before Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh. Um, four days. I mean, it was like less than a week. You know, we've we had to do it. Ooh, and um, they were expecting like a dozen or more people over. And I was like, well, you know, I wouldn't just let the dog hang out with the people all day. It's going to be really stressful. But, you know, keep giving the dog like some, you know, creating a safe space away from the activity. So the place is good for when you want the dogs to be involved with the activity and the festivities, um, but also giving them a place that's away from the noise, a little bit quieter, a little bit more kind of off on their own. So mm -hmm. a crate or a back bedroom if you don't crate your dog, although I think crating is like the best thing you can do for your I dog. I was literally going to ask you about the crate. We love, love the, the crate. crate. I'm a big when fan the family of it. is over. My dogs love it to the point where like, we have one crate in our main living room and mm -hmm. like they'll fight who gets to get right. in that crate. And I'm like, no, it's one at a time, den. guys. They're dead animals. Yeah. It's not me yeah. mm -hmm. putting them in the crate. Right. No, they prefer <laughs> it, honestly. Um, and especially when they need some time away from either like Uncle Thank Joe you. who won't stop feeding him or, yeah. or petting him or whatever. You know, um, they don't always want everybody hugging all over them. Yeah, especially right. like if, want everybody if you, hugging if all over me. You know, if you have you a know? dog that you don't have kids at home and they're not exposed to kids and then you have all the nieces and nephews and grandkids visiting, that can right. be great. Even if they like kids, it's very stressful. My extended family goes, oh, you're putting the dog in, in the jail. Yeah. I'm like, no, oh, they do. They want to no. be there. Like, I'm giving the dog time away from you guys, exactly. not the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to go in the crate with the dog. I need <laughs> some, some away from exactly. family time, too. Well, uh, but yeah, so crate training or, or creating a safe place away from away from the, the main areas in the house is, is another really good thing to be doing around the holidays, right. too. And Patty mentioned earlier about older dogs. My Yorkie is 13. Wow. So his patience level, his pain level, mm -hmm. his endurance level are all really lower now. Yep. Right. And so the fact that he can go into his crate is completely his safe space. Mm -hmm. He's blind at this point. So you're also looking at a dog who oh, knows every adult near me is a danger to me. If they're not looking where I'm at, mm -hmm. you know, when you're that tiny. When you think yeah. about what he's looking up, what yes. it looks like, you know, for him. So he uh, automatically yeah. goes to his crate mm -hmm. and he, I mean, he's a happy chappy. Yep. We'll be like, oh, it's time to have a restroom break. And he's like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? I'm out of here. <laughs> what did you do with Ernie around the holidays? The inspiration behind Animal Connection. What are some of the tactics you use? Well, at the store, I mean, he, he, he was really selective. He was very perceptive of that energy. And it's like he could read someone that had really big energy that he didn't want to be involved in and someone who, who thought they had really welcoming energy. But he didn't, he would never just go and run up to people and jump up on them. You know, he, he was trained to sit next to me and I would invite them into my space. You know, and we had children that were really scared of dogs. There was this little kid that, would, that came by the, the door of Animal Connection for like two years and looked in, scared to death of dogs. Aww. And finally, after two years, you know, we, we did get him to come and he could, you know, he could reach out and touch Ernie. And just a little guy. But I mean, he ended up being one of Ernie's great friends, but Ernie was really patient. It's like he knew you know, who, who could take it and who was really scared. So, um, you know, and, and I'm like that too. I don't, I don't particularly want to hug everybody right. at all the time. I'd rather invite you into my space yeah. and that's, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Especially for animals, it's fair. Throw this to you, yeah. Heather, the importance of exercise around this time of year. I mean, yeah. always oh, yeah. importance for animals. Always. Tired yeah. dog is a well-behaved yeah, dog. I mean, Certainly around now. The more pent-up energy they have, the more chaos generally they're going to bring. So mm -hmm. things like, you know, jumping on guests mm -hmm. or just running around and bouncing off the couches. And, just running them up. You know, mm -hmm. knocking stuff off the countertops or off the, the coffee tables. Perfect dog tail knocking, you know, height. That's where, like, the wine glasses go flying that kind of stuff so or the food yeah is. and especially with anxiety right I, I feel that exercise and anxiety go hand in hand if you're giving them a productive outlet for that nervous energy you know structured exercise um you see a lot uh, a lot less of that anxiety or, or, you know, you can definitely help decrease that or keep it to a minimum, you know, kind of management a little bit. So yeah, certainly if you're expecting, and that's what I told this client is before everybody comes over, take the dog for a nice long walk, you know, play with the dog, you know, give it, give it some energy, you know, some energy release, mm -hmm. um, and then tuck it away in its crate and give it, you know, a bone or, a, or, you know, a stuffed Kong or something and, and play the music and, just or a little, let it, it's a little drops of peace and calm yeah, right down their yeah, spine. And, let, and then they just, they're happy the to hang out by themselves yep. and they're not, you know, they're not feeling so pent up. That's right. Yeah. I mean, this is a great place also to use essential oils where they go in their crates. You can make a little spray mm -hmm. uh, that goes on their bedding. Um, you can t really take care of their feet at this time of year with some coconut yes. oil and some oils of different kinds and just rub it right in. So now they're getting the benefit yeah. of the oils. They're getting some extra care for their feet. And it works for people too. 
Yep. Rick Stevenson yep. says this question, should we feed the dogs the scraps from the holidays? It really, de A, it depends on what the scraps are. So things that are really fatty, obviously, are kind of a big no-no. You have to worry mm -hmm. about, like, acute pancreatitis. Um, that's why a lot of dogs end up in the ER um, vet after the holidays. Um, you know, or things that they shouldn't be eating. If it's something safe for them to eat, you know, a little bit of chicken, a little bit of turkey, I think that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe a couple vegetables. My dog personally, like, goes nuts for vegetables. I give her baby carrots all day, and right. she thinks that's amazing. Um, but, you know, should they be eating cookies? No, probably not, you know. Definitely um, not chocolate. anything. Yeah. yeah, definitely not Cho anything. I mean, you know, the big ones, with chocolate, xylitol. alcohol, nuts. anything with artificial sweetener, right. especially no xylitol. xylitol. No bueno. Um, you know, um, <laughs> raisins and, and grapes and that kind of stuff. Um, mm. You know, there's, you Google, you know, what's not safe for dogs. There's a big list. Oh, look um, at that. You got hey! it on screen. Shoot a wicked. Perfect. Oh, see? Timing. Did you say that over? I did. It is brilliant. <laughs> cinnamon, and no I didn't know cinnamon and nutmeg was at one. This is really informative right here, Patty Bowden. This ain't my this first rodeo. <laughs> yeah, nicely done, lady. But yeah, yeah. like our, at Thanksgiving, like the dogs got a little bit of pumpkin. We have canned pumpkin. Just it's, it's good for a digestion. Um, so like that's something you could give the dogs and they could feel a little bit included in the special day. But I mean, you shouldn't be giving them stuff that's totally outside the realm of their normal diet. You're yeah. going to get some upset stomachs. It, Canned it, pumpkins not are worse. your best yeah. friend right mm -hmm. now. And, and you have other things for digestive woes too, right? Yes. There's a digestive woes for us. Yeah. There's one called Digize that I'm always traveling with. If you get car sick, if your dog gets car sick, mm -hmm. and there's also one that's just specific to pets. That's right. both of them can work on the pets. But also for us, it's about um, volume, right? Ginger, right. Yeah. So if you eat too much, this can help. If you're eating something bad, this can help. One of the things that's great about oils is. They're not there to make us go more to the bathroom or less to the bathroom. They're there to balance the mm -hmm. system and the same for the That's animals. That's a good way to put that. Guess yeah. who's watching right now? Uh, I don't know, Mr. Horny Horn. Sean Horn is watching <laughs> right now. What up, Sean Horn? Laura Gaines also giving you hey, some props. Hey, Laura. Prize. She's one of my oily friends. <laughs> uh, you're getting love from Patty Riley from Tootie Moncure. Uh, a lot of folks at Crozet watching right now. We're getting the question about traveling in the car. Mm. Long um, distances in the car. For Heather, me. take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a huge fan of making sure that however you're traveling with your pet, especially like large dogs, pro projectile. 110 pound right? German Shepherd. Oh I mean, going to Long so, Island. So here's the thing. For, number one, the, the safest way to travel with your, your dog is in a crate. Not everybody can fit a crate in their car, especially you have a little, little four-door sedan or I used to drive a little Camry. Like I couldn't fit some of my larger clients in there. So in, in a crate, I mean. Um, so then some sort of a restraint harness system. The dog is wearing a harness and they're tethered. Whether it, they're, They make ones that are great that literally click into the seatbelts mm -hmm. um, so that in an accident it's not going to let go. Um, but there's all, all other, so some sort of restraint or... Um, containment. So I'm not a big fan of the, the you see them a lot for the little dogs. It's yes. like a booster seat. Yeah. It's like, well, you're just making the dog higher up and more likely to hit the windshield if you were yes. to get in an accident. Oh my gosh, I hadn't thought of that. I mean, the, they, it's just this zoomed. little, it's just this little bucket, right? So there's nothing oh holding gosh. them in. There's no like top. There's no tether. Now, if there was a, if you had had them in that, and then they were tethered to something, yes. I think that would be totally fine. I think some of them do have a little clip in them. Yeah, I hope. Other well, things to think about yeah. is like not feeding your pet right before you put them in right. the car. Car sickness, right? I, I drove with my dog this weekend and she burped a couple of times and I was like, is she going to barf? And like, you know, going 70 uh -oh. down the highway is not the time That's you want to deal with a vomiting either. dog, yeah. right? In the back seat. Right. And luckily she was just gassy or something. She's fine. She's a really good car traveler. But I was like, God, please don't let me have to pull over in the middle of the highway to deal with vomiting dog. Um, so yeah, so paying attention to, you know, not feeding them right before and then not loading them with treats when they're in the car. Um, well, and being prepared. Yeah, being prepared. I always don't have... Don't be surprised if your dog gets yeah, sick. Yeah, paper towels and I always keep some Nature's Miracle in the car just in exactly. case. Because it happens. Happens, right, you know, they coffee grounds are amazing for that. Mm, that will help the smell for sure. Yeah, I never heard that. Yeah, police officer. Uh oh. <laughs> just sprinkle coffee grounds on any sort of mess, and it absorbs the smell, mm -hmm. and then you can vacuum oh, it up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Deborah Wald giving you some props. Debbie Nurse Wald is one of our local Nurse heroes Wald. for sure. Welcome to the show, Nurse Wald. What did you do with Ernie in travel? Man, he. Easy, I, I didn't do easy, anything. Easy, easy. He, he was an easy keeper. Yeah. Ride or die, he, he Ernie. Just, just yeah. right there by your side. That's right. He was just ready to go. I mean, but, you know, I, I took care with some things like that for an, an, the Irish Wolfhound we had. I mean, he hated travel, so he yeah. got slathered with anything that we could give him. You know, my, 
my project with him is just, man, go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we'll wake you up when we get there. You know, so that worked for him. But, you know, there's a couple other things I want to remind people. If you are traveling for pets, please, please, please make sure you have double ID tags. One yep. other collar. If you use a harness, put another one on the harness. I mean, make sure you have your vet records with you. Make mm -hmm. sure you have an emergency phone number somewhere. Or, you know, make sure you have a pic picture of your dog. You know, everybody does on their phone. But just make sure you're, mm -hmm. you have things like this. Because, you know, people are prepared with their kids and their families. But, yeah. you know, I would feel horrible if, if a dog got lost while you're on vacation. Especially if you're, you like, know? out of state traveling. And it's right. not, the dog's not going to be able to find their way home. Right. You know? Um, exactly. Exactly. So making sure they, you have a way to identify them, so hopefully someone picks them up and you can so get them good. returned right. to you. I mean, if yeah, so just you know, just be pre as prepared mm -hmm. with your pets as you are with your family is, is pretty much what I want to say. How about at Animal Connection and McIntyre Plaza items we can purchase? to help with holidays and to help with travel. Right, well this weekend we're gonna have sprays okay. you know, for calming or for diff other different uses, you know, for maybe the digestive problems uh, or just, you know, anything just in case. You can talk with Amy about that. Uh, we do have the ID tags. We do have really secure harnesses and um, leashes. I mean, things that we know are not gonna come loose. Mm -hmm. um, some of these that have the snaps and everything, I am not a big fan of them. You know, whereas one that kind of wraps around the body and goes through, like the harness leads, mm -hmm. I mean, they can't escape those. And they fit every size dog. And um, gosh, and do something else besides those retractable leads. I mean, we will not sell them for any reason. You don't like those? I don't, because right. if, if a dog- They're dangerous. They are dangerous, they will pull out of someone's hands, right. mm -hmm. if they're extended and the dog's running, you can't possibly pull that dog in without burning your hands. Or, or you're gonna like rip your shoulder or rip out of your, your shoulder out. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Or if it gets loose and now you've got this big thing Heavy clattering thing. behind you. Yep. I mean, you cannot control there. a dog with these things, yeah. so just don't buy them. I've burned right. mistakenly the back of people's legs mm -hmm. because the <coughs> exactly. cord will go, as we know, right? go running out, wrapped around the poor girl's right. leg and left a terrible burn on her leg. You have no control. Yeah. Absolutely no control. And then Amy Wickshorn said lavender. Lavender. Yes. <laughs> That's right. I like when you talk in the third person, <laughs> Amy right. Wickshorn. Uh, we have this question coming from Grace, who's watching in Richmond. Guys, I love your show. Question about dogs that come visit the house. In oh, laws or other people's dogs visiting the house. You want to take that one? That's yeah, a tough one. that's a tough question yeah. because. Tell them not to come. <laughs> yeah, I mean, setting bound like that's that's more like a setting personal boundaries kind of question, you know. Um, but so you you know someone's coming with a pet. Um, if it's a well-behaved pet, great. That's awesome. I mean, that's going to be a fun visit. But but if you have a, a pet in the home and someone else is bringing a pet, uh, I would go into it with low expectations for the pets to get along, and then you're always pleasantly surprised if they like each other. Um, making sure that even if they do like each other and they get along really well, that they're still getting time away from each other because it's, it's again, it, even if they enjoy it, it's still kind of stressful. So giving them kind of their own corners, their own crates to go to, uh, making sure that they're, you know, uh, getting one-on-one -on -one time and they're not having to share all their time with this new, you know, visitor. Um, if you, if you, this is for both of you. If you had someone coming vis to visit your house and you had not met their dog before, would you ever, say, let's say they're staying for the weekend mm -hmm. with their dog, would you ever say, well, that's fine, here's what I expect out of your dog and give them sort of some ground rules? I would. Just, Absolutely. You would? Yeah. I would. Yeah. My friends know what's expected if they're going to bring dogs. They... Yeah. They have a certain set of criteria or I'm expectations. I kind of yeah. tell by extended family, just don't even bring your dog to my house. Yeah. Is that... I would, uh, let's say you are going to have a dog. I yeah. think words are powerful. Yeah. And you could just say, instead of yeah. saying, I want to set some expectations, you could easily right. say, I am so excited that you all are coming and I want the visit to be amazing for both you and the dog. So here's some ideas. Do you mm -hmm. have ideas to engage them as a stakeholder, get them involved? And then I'm going to share a little tip called stealthing. Ooh. Diffusers with peace and calming, just generally around the house. Ooh, that's a good you idea. You don't have mm -hmm. to put it on them. They can get away from the diffuser. You're not going to put them in a small room with anything like that. Right. Mm -hmm. But then like everyone's... essential oils potpourri? Exactly. Is that like... And it's, it's in the different. air. It's more subtle than and that. And it's yeah. helping everyone. That's a good idea. Mm. It's more energetic yeah. than it is fragrance it is yeah. so for people that are sensitive they say i'm sensitive to fragrance this is not obnoxious yeah right sean and says i am witness to lavender 
Yes, yes. <laughs> I burned myself. I made caramel popcorn, and Ooh, caramel, caramel burns, burns like so bad. nothing else. And I had a thing of ice water waiting for me because I know myself. <laughs> Oh. And I also had a, a lavender, and I just rolled it right on. It blistered wildly, and it never felt any pain. It The lavender took wow. care of the burn. It took care of the pain, and the blister's gone now. Right. Amazing. So lavender is the Swiss army knife of all oils. If you that. don't Ooh. know what to use, <laughs> make sure it's that. high quality. Yes, it's great for anything skin, anything burn, anything nasal, Bloody noses disappear with one drop. It's really very, very good to have on hand. Whereas our, oh. at our house, it would be the multi-tool. Uh, yeah. That's you know right. I mean? no, that's tools? right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know multi-tool. He's not a fan of Swiss Army knife? Well, we have well they're competing brands. He's got a multi-tool. Got a multi-tool. He's, <laughs> he's got everything in those pockets. <laughs> he's got all kinds of Is stuff. Is she talking about her husband? Her husband. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love agree. it. He would agree with that. Amber <laughs> Rexrod giving you some props right hey. now. Hey. Um, all right, I'll tell you what. How about this? Why don't we ask um, the esteemed guests what they're thankful for? This oh, season? yeah, that's good. That's a good yeah. one. Go Should for we it. put you on the spot? Uh, so I'll tell you that today especially I am thankful for my struggles. Uh, In this last week, I've spoken to three people who have just newly come down with Bell's Palsy. And other people in the community knew of my experience and connected them with me immediately. The ability to just connect with someone who's going through something like that, say, I'm working to be on the other side. You can handle this. It's going to be okay. That's the biggest gift is to help somebody who's somewhere where you really struggled You know, you want to act like everything's okay, and it's not always, especially this time of year. So sometimes our struggles are meant for good. They're meant for us to be able to help others. They're meant for us to grow. They're meant for us to find something like essential Mm -hmm. oils that we can share. And so I'm thankful for my struggles today. Nice. Wow. What are you That's thankful a for? Tough act to wow. follow right there. Very yes. well said. Thanks, Amy. Amy. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. This time of year, I am most thankful for my family. So all of those questions, like my family, I don't have to tell those things to. They just know, right? So I, I'm lucky that uh, I have a really, really great family and extended family. And for the most part, when I visit or have them visit, it's pretty low stress. Um, It's mostly enjoyment. So I'm very, very thankful. I've been really blessed, Um, especially my parents. Um, They've just been wonderful. So I'm very thankful to to have them in my life and to have, especially these times of years, to be able to spend time with them. What about you? Um, You know what? I am, uh, you know what? I am very thankful for my wife. She's a saint. (laughs) Amazing. She is at home and she's involved with the business and she has our little guy on her knee and he is not easy. Um, not that he's not special and great, but a 20 month old, every day is a different day emotionally <laughs> and she is with him all the time and he's just blossoming and it's an absolute testament to her patience. I'm getting a little choked up right now, but she is, she is amazing. I am very grateful for my wife. Now does a wildness come from your side of the family? Uh, it does. Okay, now good. she's Irish. Oh. So okay, she likes yeah. a libation or two. Yeah. So you know, both, but mainly from my side. Nice. Yes. How <laughs> and how about you, you Patty? Yeah. Ah, well, obviously friends and family. I mean, I'm really lucky that we have so much support. But you know, I think maybe especially today, too, I am so lucky that I have so many good friends in business that, I mean, even that do the same things that I do. And I'm just so lucky I can call on uh, family friends or friend friends and business friends and you know, just talk things out and work things out or just say, hey, Nancy Gwynn, what are you doing today? And she knows what I'm talking about. And uh, <laughs> Or, hey, Tracy, I'll mail you a cutout of me for your store. That's right. <laughs> did you see that? I did, yeah. you know, and, you know, and, you know, hey, Conrad, what's for lunch? You know, you know, just all these different people that are just, you know, just so great and part of my life. And I'm just really lucky. This has you been know? a great show. Yeah. Um, you guys are great. Seriously, yep. things are great. Um, next week, I'm so pumped for. We Holy will see smokes! You next week, too. Tell us what's happening next week. <laughs> Holy smokes! It's going to be. We're going to call it a not so silent night. I think. <laughs> we. Everybody at the downtown mall might be hearing us. Oh next boy! Week. <laughs> we That's have the goal. on the show a Christmas Carol extravaganza with some of the best of Charlotte. So we have. Bob Gerard and Charlie Passerfield from the Gladstone. Legends in Charlton. Leg- music legends. Yes. We have uh, my other half, Conrad Zeller. Uh, we have 
another legend in the beer world, Dave Warwick. We have a legend in the business world, Amy Wixhorn, and we are going to sing some Christmas carols you may recognize, and definitely some you're not. So uh, <laughs> there could be libations. There's going to be a rhythm section of which you and I are going to be part of. Yep, you're going to play the triangle. I'm going to play the cowbell, and who knows what's going to happen. Who knows? It's we know it's going to be fun, and we're, that's how we're going to ring out the year. That's going to be our last show of 2019. Oh God, it's going to be so. Listen to him. He's like crying. He's laughing. I can't, I'm so <laughs> it's going to be epic. Yeah, we're going to be drinking. And oh, and we Christmas have the bartender carols. from Dirty Nellie's, Sherry Shefflet. I forgot she's about her. She's coming. Yeah, she's you coming. You confirm her. Yep. Oh, that's amazing. Saw her the other night. She that's said crazy. she would try to be there. I love it. So she's it's fun. Uh, like five foot, slight but full of fight. Absolutely, she is a powerful woman. She's great. Um, so. I'll tell you what. This is what we're going to do with today's show. It's fantastic. Yep. We will archive it on AnimalConnectionVA.com. Yep. We will archive it on ilovesevil.com. We and will what's turn barking it local. to an Apple podcast, also on What's Barking Local. Yep. Uh, we'll syndicate it for 30 days across our network, 17 Facebook pages, 17 Twitter accounts. Oh, a my newsletter gosh. newsletter that goes oh out gosh. to 118,000 inboxes. Wow. Um, you guys And your pages. It? Yeah, yep. what's your pages. Thank you. Um, <coughs> your Christmas plans, where are you going to be? Uh, back and forth. Okay. I'm um, going to go out to my folks who are now in North Carolina because okay. my brother and his lovely girlfriend are coming. Where about? Sanford. Okay. So it's like the middle of Oh, nowhere. I love Sanford. It's a nice area. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's nice, but yeah. my mom complains, there's no nothing down here, Heather. Um, so we'll be there before Christmas, and then I'll be back here for Christmas, and I have a couple dogs boarding, so we'll be spending Yay. Christmas with the dogs and New Year's with the dogs, which is what we've done the last couple of years, and it's been really nice. Nice. And Amy Wixhorn? Home sweet home in Charlottesville. Everybody's welcome. Yep. I love it. I love it. And Patty Book. Home, Patty baby. Zeller. That's right. Home. It's Shea Zeller. We're going to be home. <laughs> yep. Hogwaller. In the Hogwaller. Yep. I love it. I love it. That's right. Great show. Um, everybody, be sure to tune in next Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Do not miss that one. <laughs> We're not sure what to expect. It's going to be great content. Not great so content. silent night. <laughs> not so silent <laughs> night. She's bringing a bar with her. It's going to be so fun. You know, why not? It's the holidays, it's the holidays. right? It's, if there's there any you time go. to do it, it's next week. <laughs> Uh, you guys Hallelujah. enjoy your afternoon. <laughs> keep it local. Keep it safe. Have fun. And enjoy bark your local. afternoon and bark local. That's right. <laughs> show. Woohoo! Good show. And you explore. Good show. <laughs> I said, done, guys. That was 50 minutes. Cool. Yeah, we're so we're so worth it. <laughs> so good. All we're gonna do is take the photo. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah.